Dan. This is Guns and Guitars, the channel that's all about having the most amount of fun for the least amount of money. This here is the Kershaw Shuffle DIY. Now this is an awesome little everyday carry multi-tool and pocket knife combination in one. Now, I'm a knife guy, so when I carry a blade, I wanna carry a blade. So I carry this as sort of a secondary blade and I mostly carry it because it's a multi-tool having the bottle opener and the screwdrivers. The only thing is that it's only available in a plain edge, but I do really love this knife and it's definitely on my list of the best budget blades under $25. So I'd rather keep this as a secondary fully serrated edge that I could use for tougher cutting tasks and sort of keep the mileage off of my plain edge so that this thing will stay razor sharp a little bit longer. All right, let's get started taking this thing from a puny little plain edge to a wicked serrated edge. Now this is a great knife for you to practice these sort of DIY hacks with because, like I mentioned, it's less than $25. So if you ruin it, you're not going to be completely heartbroken like you would if you were modifying a $90 pocket knife like a Spyderco Endura. Now, if you haven't seen it already, I do have a video on how to take your serrations back to a factory razor sharp edge using simple household items like sandpaper and screwdrivers. And if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out that video first. But if you already know how to keep a serrated edge sharp and you wanna see how I take this Kershaw Shuffle DIY and turn it into a fully serrated blade, then stick around. All right, to cut our serrations into this, there's probably lots of different methods, but my favorite method is to use a rotary tool like a Dremel. And my rotary tool is actually over here. And as you can see, I just have my favorite Flex Chef kit on there. It just makes these rotary tools so much more manageable. And the attachments I'm gonna be using are just your standard uh, reinforced cutting wheel. And I'm gonna use this diamond engraving set. This kit is super cheap. You can get it on Amazon for like $8. And this is the same kit that I use for like engraving my guitars and stuff. And there's some attachments in here that are really helpful for cutting serrations. Now, the biggest thing that you have to worry about when you are cutting serrations into your blade is that these blades are already heat treated and tempered for good edge retention and we don't want to ruin that heat treat or temper so we're going to be very careful not to overheat the blade so what i have here is a spritzer bottle this is a really fancy one because my wife is a cosmetologist but you definitely don't need something like this just a cheap one dollar spray bottle will be fine and then put some ice water in it this is now just cool water it was ice water but the ice melted but we're just going to be spraying it with this water from time to time to keep the blade from overheating we don't want the blade to get above like three or four hundred degrees that's when it's going to start messing with the temper so basically we just want to keep the blade cool enough that we can touch it with our fingers so we'll just do a little pass and then spray it with some cool water to cool it off and make sure that we haven't overheated it and then we'll do another pass Another really helpful tool are these magnetic parts trays. You can get these things for free from Harbor Freight. If you sign up for their coupons in the mail, then these are free with any purchase. And so I pick one up pretty much anytime I go to Harbor Freight. Um, I use them all the time around my workshop. But for this, it's awesome because the magnet will hold your knife blade in place while we work on it. So it's kind of like having an extra hand so I can kind of hold it with one hand and the magnet will kind of hold it on the other end and then we can get in and do our cuts. Now as for my actual serrations that I'm gonna cut in here, I'm actually gonna change up the blade shape just a little bit because I feel like this is like a really short, stout blade and I don't necessarily want it so stout. It makes it a little less utilitarian. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to add a little bit of a recurve in there. So I have a silver Sharpie right here. And so I'm just gonna cut off a little shape, something like this. I'm gonna add a little bit of a recurve. And it's kind of gonna leave me almost with a little tanto edge up there that I'm gonna leave plain. And so I'll just add serrations into this recurve area and I'll leave a little plain edge right there. Because in my opinion, serrations work best if you have a little bit of a plain edge there to kind of guide your cut. And then as it guides your cut in, then the serrations bite and you can really rip through whatever you're cutting. So to get rid of this material, I'm just gonna use this cutting wheel and I'm just gonna do one pass at a time and spray cold water on it to keep it nice and cool. I forgot to mention that I'm just using my rotary tool on the lowest speed setting. Again, that's gonna help us control the temperature of the blade a little bit, make sure that I can still touch it, that it's not too hot to handle and therefore not ruining the temper of our blade. A quick little tip is that as you're spraying this water on here, if you start to see steam coming up, that means the water has hit its boiling point where it evaporates and turns into steam. That means you've hit 212 degrees at least. And again, remember we wanna keep this under 
three or 400 degrees. So once you see that steam, that's a good time that you want to stop and make sure that you're spraying more cold water on there. And uh, the less steam that you see, the better. That means that you're doing a better job not ruining the heat treat or the temper on your blade. All right. Now that is actually looking pretty good. All right, so now it's time to actually cut in our serrations. And I think I've decided the pattern that I wanna follow for this particular knife is the same serrated pattern that I have on this Ontario Utilitech. So what I did is I pulled out my diamond engraving bit set and I found the correct size for each of these scallops. So this one is perfect for that bigger scallop. And then I have the smaller one, which is good for the smaller scallops. Now we're gonna be measuring from the center of each scallop to the next one. So our pattern is gonna be eighth inch, 330 seconds, eighth inch, eighth inch, 330 seconds, eighth inch, eighth inch. We're gonna mark where to cut in just a little divot with our cutting wheel. And then we're gonna go back and in that divot, we're gonna end up grinding out each scallop. But one thing I've noticed when I do this is that when you're grinding your scallop, it usually ends up just a little bit to the right of where your divot is. So we're gonna mark our divots a little bit to the left of where we want our actual center of our scallop to be. All right, so I got all my measurements marked. Now I'm gonna go back and just make some small little divots with my cutting wheel. Now again, we're gonna keep this thing on the low speed setting and we're gonna keep spraying with some cold water so that we keep that blade temper from changing. And this is the tedious part because you can't just do all your big scallops first and then go back and put on your smaller one and do your smaller scallops after that. Um, you kinda, because of how these bits kinda walk in the groove to the right, like I was telling you, you kinda have to go each scallop in order. So we're gonna do big and then two smalls and then big and then two smalls. So we're gonna keep having to switch out our bit, which kind of stinks, but trust me, you'll need to do that if you want to have good equal spacing. You'll notice that we're working up some nasty burrs on this side. We'll knock those off in a little bit. But there is a good start. And I know what you're thinking, that looks terrible. That's because I was really just getting channels ready for these scallops. So now I can go back and I can make them all the correct size. As you can see, I have the canals dug, but if you look at this side, there's not a whole lot of teeth yet. So I'm gonna dig each of these in deeper and I'm gonna start with the smaller ones and then I'm gonna go back and do the bigger ones after that. All right, now let's stick in the larger bit. All right, so on the back here, we've got some nasty burrs. So we're gonna knock those off real quick. This is just kind of a half round file and I'm just gonna gently kind of just drag this across here like that. All right, now I'm just going back with my $8 diamond pen sharpening tool, which if you watched my video on how to sharpen serrations, you know about this tool already. If you haven't, check out the video up there in the corner because this is a little $8 tool that I really believe that every knife owner needs to have. But what I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning up these serrations. This is a medium grit stone. And then after that, I'm gonna go through all the different various grits of sandpaper and polishing compound to get these things nice and sharp. But first, I'm gonna get them all evened out with this stone. It's a little less abrasive than those grinding wheels and it's gonna get us a nice round, pretty shape. All right, now look at this. Isn't that just the nastiest looking blade? 
Let's just do a sharpness test real quick. Beautiful, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. Perfect, perfect. All right, now obviously a task that's much more well suited to a serrated blade is cutting cardboard. Obviously nobody's cutting paper with a serrated blade. So let's see how this thing does through four layers of cardboard. There we go. Four layers of cardboard and it's a nice clean cut. And like I said, I love having that plain edge up front to help slide into those serrations. Helps guide it in beautifully. See, nice clean cuts here. See, look at how nice and clean these edges are. Well, I certainly love this blade now. It's gonna make an excellent secondary blade to my primary everyday carry to kind of keep the miles off for these more tough cutting tasks that would knock off that razor edge. And if you like this video, then you probably wanna subscribe because I think I'm gonna make a playlist of my favorite do-it-yourself modifications to pocket knives, how to improve them and customize them and make them perfect for you. So if you like the sound of that, definitely hit that subscribe button and stick around. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. See you in that next video.